Okay. So, yesterday we started talking about molarity, correct? What is molarity telling us? What information is molarity telling us? It's telling you how much solute you're dissolving in how much solution. So honestly, it's telling you how concentrated your solution is, right? How much sugar are you adding to your sweet tea is what molarity is telling you, correct? All right, well, this all deals with the word concentration. Concentration and molarity can kind of be used hand in hand a little bit, right? So today we're going to be focusing on just the concentration aspect of it. So concentration is a measure of the amount of solute dissolved in a given solvent. Okay, well, we have two, you can go two ways. If it's really, really concentrated, it means you have a large amount of solute. So this is if you add a cup of sugar to a glass of tea, right? That would be very, very, very concentrated. That probably wouldn't taste very good, right? Okay, what's the opposite of concentrated? Diluted. Okay, if you dilute a solution, you're adding solvent, or you're adding a very, very, very small amount of solute. Okay, but these are qualita qualitative descriptions. It basically means qualitative is when you're just describing something. So if I go tell you to make me some sweet tea, I'm not being very descriptive, right? Everybody has a different definition of what's, how much sugar to add to make them something sweet tea, right? Okay, so that's a qualitative. If I go tell you to add one cup of sugar to one liter of tea, I'm, not, I'm being very specific, correct? Okay, so qualitative observations are very broad. Do you think these are good scientific descriptions? No. Okay, so therefore today we're going to learn how to talk about these things using numbers. Okay, these are our quantitative observations. Does anybody remember how I taught you to tell the difference between qualitative and quantitative? Quantitative sounds like what word? Quantity. Quantity is talking about what? Numbers. So quantitative descriptions are when I tell you how much. One cup, one mole, one gram. Okay. Qualitative is when I'm just giving you a general idea. Go make me some sweet tea. All right, so here's a picture for you to look at. If we look at the beaker on the left, if we look at the bubble, how, let's look at the pink versus the blue. There's more blue, less pink, correct? If we look at the bubbles right here, correct? There's more blue, less pink. Well, the blue is the solute, the pink is the solvent. So our, if we look at our ratio of pink to blue, there's more blue, there's less pink. So this is going to be a concentrated solution. If we look at the beaker on the right, what happened to our ratio of blue to pink? It shrunk. It shrunk. What got bigger? The pink got bigger. The blue got smaller. Okay. So is our amount of solute changing? No. What did we add to make this diluted? We're adding solvent. Okay. Which leads us to our next point. Okay. When you add water to a solution, when you're adding a solvent to a solution, your number of moles does not change. Underline that, circle that, star that. That sounds like a great test question. The number of moles will not change. The amount of solute does not change. When you have sweet tea and you're trying to dilute it, you add tea. Did you change the amount of sugar? No. We are changing the amount of solvent. So your moles of solute changes or stays the same and everything else changes around. So your ratio is changing, not your amount. Okay, another way to think about this is when you're taking aspirin or ibuprofen or Aleve or whatever it is that you like to take. Okay, have you ever noticed on the bottle it says to take with a glass of water? Okay, do you have to take with a glass of water? No. Okay, the reason it says to take with a glass of water is because it gives that medicine something to dissolve into. If your medicine is dissolved, it's a lot easier for your body to absorb it. Okay, if you take it on an empty stomach and there's no liquid in your stomach, 
then your stomach acid just has to break it down and your stomach takes a while to break down food, right? So if you drink with a full glass of water, it technically gets into your system faster versus if you just take it on an empty stomach. Now, are you going to get the dose of medicine regardless? Yes. It just all comes into effect how fast you want to absorb by your body. Still the same amount of aspirin. You're not increasing the amount of aspirin. It's just one is making it more effective. If you have a headache right now, I'd rather have relief in 20 minutes versus two hours, right? Okay, so when we are diluting, remember our amount of moles is not changing. It's kind of like conservation of mass. In conservation of mass, when we talked about it in the last few sections, if we start with 10 grams, we have to end with 10 grams. Can it look different? Yes. Can it be in a different form? Yes. Okay, but it still has to be there. Our number of moles of solute does not change. And so when we, we have a new equation. So the equation for dilutions is we take our our initial molarity and our initial volume. So if I give you 100 milliliters of sweet tea and I want to dilute it to 500 milliliters, then that's going to be our final molarity and our final volume. So these two ratios have to be equal. We can't gain or lose any salute. So if, I, if my molarity is decreasing, what do you think I'm going to have to do to the volume? Increase it. They are inversely proportional, which means as one goes down, the other has to go up. Okay, my M1 and V1 are the starting concentrations, and the M2 and the V2 are the final concentrations. Now, it honestly does not matter which side you put your initial and which side you put your final, as long as you put the right ones together as long as you put your initial volume and your initial concentration together. Okay, so what do you think we're going to do as we read these problems? Underline and circle, correct? One more thing I want to talk about is something called a stock solution. So remember yesterday when I was teaching you how to make the standard solutions, we put a, we went and we weighed out a certain amount of our solute, we put them in the bottom of that volumetric class and we filled it up with water to the line. Remember me talking about that yesterday? Okay, why do you think it would be important to use a stock solution when we're making these types of dilutions? We need to know what we're starting with. If we don't know what we're starting with, can we dilute it correctly? No, if I have sweet tea and I tell you to dilute it to a one molar solution, well, I have no idea what this is. So I don't know if I'm supposed to be adding water. I don't know if I'm supposed to be adding salute. You need to know what you're starting off with in order to do these properly. Okay, so let's do an example. Now, you guys remember back in physical science when me and Ms. Tinklepaul made you write down your variables, and then we made you write down your equation, and then we made you plug in your variables and show us the work and give us an answer? Remember us doing that? And you kind of hating us because, Ms. Tackett, I can do this in my head. Please make me stop, right? Well, we're going to do the example problems that way today just to help us learn how to do it. Now, if you don't want to do that in your homework, if you don't want to do that on the test, that's fine. As long as you're showing me work, I don't care what kind of work. But I really, some people, it's really helping if they list their variables today, okay? So let's read this problem. If you have 340 milliliters of a 0.5 molar solution, how much solvent will I need to add to make a 0.25 molar solution? So I circled and I underlined. Why did I circle the first two numbers, and, or underline the first two numbers and circle the last number? The first two are our beginning and the last one is our final. So I'm going to list my variables just to kind of help us get the idea of this. So my first molarity is going to be 0 0.5 molar. My first volume is going to be 340 milliliters. My second molarity is going to be 0 0.25 molar. And they're asking me to solve for my second volume, correct? Now that I've kind of figured out all of my variables, what do you think I'm going to do? Set them equal to each other. So my equation was MV equals MB. 
So now I'm just going to plug in my number. So I'm going to take 0 0.5 molar times 340 milliliters. Do I need to convert these to, milli to liters? It's asking you for volume. It doesn't make you do it in a specific unit, right? So you don't have to convert to liters here if you don't want to. Okay? And this is going to equal my final molarity, which is 0.25 times my second volume. How am I going to get that V all by itself? Divide by what? I'm going to divide by 0.25. What I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. What is this going to do for my units? Cancels out the molarity. We're left with milliliters, which is a unit for volume, correct? So when I put this in my calculator, I'm going to do 0 0.5 times 340 divided by 0 0.25, and I get an answer of 680 milliliters. Now, technically, there's only one significant figure, right? And so technically our answer is 700, but we're going to wait a step before we round that to one sick pick, okay? Let's wait one more step. Let's go back and let's read the question. Didn't I circle another piece of information? I circled the word add. That's a signal word. What's the question actually asking us for? How much you're going to add. It's not asking us for the final volume, is it? No, it's asking you how much are you going to add to the 340 milliliters to get to my final volume. So what do you think I'm going to do to get to there? Okay, so I'm going to take my 680, which was my final volume, correct? And I'm going to subtract it from my initial volume. And I get an answer of 340 milliliters. Now, technically there's only one significant figure. So what's my answer need to be? 300. Okay, so let's do another problem. You guys ready for a second example? Okay, number two. If I dilute 250 milliliters of a 0.1 molar solution to a volume of 750 milliliters, what will the concentration of the solution be? Okay, again, I'm going to go ahead and list my variables just so that it'll help you guys see where I'm getting all these numbers. So my first molarity is 0 0.1, my first volume is 250, my second molarity is what we are solving for, and my second volume is 750. Now I'm just going to plug these into my equation. I'm going to have NV equals NV. My first molar solution is 0.1 times 250 equals my molarity times 750. How do I get my molarity all by itself? Divide by 750. My molarity is going to be 0.1 times 250 divided by 750. I get an answer of 0.0. .0. Three, three, but I only get to keep two significant figures, so I'm going to stop there. And my unit is going to be, you could either put moles per liter, or you could put a capital M. And I know that you can't see down there because of the desktop trial icon. All right, so how do we feel about this? Okay. There is one part about these problems that is going to trick you every single time. Let's look back at number one. What was the signal word in this problem that let me know that there was an extra step? Add. So while you are reading these problems, look for that adding word. When you see that adding word, we're not solving for final volume. It's not asking you for initial volume. It's wanting you, how much are you going to have to physically add to get this final molarity? So 
So look for that word add, okay? All right, now your, you have five homework problems on my website. Where should we do these homework problems at? On a piece of paper in your notebook, right? You can do them on the same piece of paper from your homework from yesterday. Maybe this is going to scroll up in a second. There we go. Okay, there's five problems. Show me work. If you don't want to list your variables, you don't have to list your variables, but you need to be showing me some sort of work because on your test, you won't get credit unless there's work. 